If I would say international players excluded, I would probably guess 10% of NBA players know who Jelko Obradovic is. And I'm not even saying know what he looks like. I'm talking about I've heard the name. 10%? I th- <laughs> Can we 40? can we exclude internet? Can we just say non European players? Or are we talking about all NBA players? What per- no, I'm saying nobody. That, so I'm talking about a player that has never touched overseas, never t- never never played overseas, is not international. Oh, oh, oh. exclude those guys. Exclude those uh, guys. What, so we're talking yeah, about what percentage of those guys. Guys that have only, yeah, I say ten percent of those guys that are left have probably three, never heard who Jucko Rodgers is. Two, 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 two to three percent. <laughs> <laughs> Two to three percent. I look. He want to text my guy and be like, "Yo, you know who Zelko Bradovich is?" I bet you there's dudes who played overseas, <laughs> who played in the NBA, like you know, like I take a guy, like John Luer, my teammate at Wisconsin. He played overseas for mm-hmm. lockout year. I bet you he doesn't know who Zelko Bradovich is. Probably, probably doesn't. <laughs> he went back. Probably doesn't. Shit out there. <laughs> Yo, text, text him and see. Text and, him and if he if he does, the only reason is because he's real cool with Nick Kalathis and maybe, but Nick didn't play for him, so my my may, he he might follow. But I'm saying Nick, that's and that might be that might be it. But I'm saying that's kind of that's kind of crazy how like the basketball world is super small, but I feel like. NBA players have no idea about anything overseas, nah. and uh, they, they don't even they yeah, don't even why. think about. It. That's why I don't understand why again why everybody wants to comment on the NBA, especially all these coaches, and say like like I'll be honest, they're not they're not even necessarily wrong in what they say. It's just like, bro, mm-hmm. for what? Like, why do y'all care so much? <laughs> yeah, this whole this whole NBA versus overseas narrative, it's gotta it's gotta go somewhere at a certain point. Nah, it's terrible. It's it's like, I mean, honestly, the WNBA be doing the same thing though. Like, kind of, it's like I don't know, y'all just stay in y'all lane. It's a good good product. Do what y'all do. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> do what y'all do. Yeah. Nah, for sure. But let me introduce the show. We back with uh, Inside Overseas. We putting a little twist on it. Got my man Jordan Taylor over here. You a uh, 11, 11 year pro point guard for the London Lions. 12. You know, twelve. Excuse 12. me. Excuse me. I should. I should have. I should have yeah. known better. I should have known better, man. You've been. You've been doing your your thing this year. Hitting hitting some game winners. <laughs> got the got the social media popping over there. You like a little celebrity in London? I don't know about all that though. I was walking through the mall the other day, and there's like this little thirteen year old girl, and she is that Jordan Taylor's like an American accent, and I was kind of confused. I just kept walking, but it's just you know overseas, like you hear that every now and then. And I just kept moving, and she was at the game last night, and she had a whole British accent. She was telling explaining to me how she was just taking the piss as they say in london she put a whole american iowa accent on it was pretty funny it was it was a cool experience honestly but <laughs> no nah, nah, not celebrity nah, enjoy it until you until you come over to the yeah, dark side enjoy I know, it man I know. every I know. moment so i gotta put my face on tv so i can still get some love man <laughs> <laughs> nah i'm already knowing man but uh take us through uh so you you playing the euro cup this year with the london lions man take us through uh through your game yesterday man what was uh what was something? Tell me something special that you saw yesterday, and that uh, that that kind of led to y'all winning. Man, honestly, it's our our team in general. We we had three games in a row now, two games in a row now, where we've been down by seven with under forty seconds left and won, and won the game. And three games in a row, in the game before that, we was down by fifteen going into the fourth quarter and came back and won. So honestly, it's really. We having one of them seasons, you know, when like things are just going, we're playing bad right now, but we're still winning. So that's, I think that's a good sign is you just got to figure out a way to write the shit. But something, something that stood out, I think was Tariq Phillip, man, like his, his tenacity. He just, he's like, I'm trying to think he's, he's like Gary Payton for the, <laughs> for, for the, for the older dudes. This dude, he had a and one layup. He missed the layup last week against Hamburg. Uh, to tie the game, and we you got funny rims at the copper box, and this week he had a hit a big and mm-hmm. one, and he was beating himself up last week for missing that layup, and you know, it was cool to see because we you know, as an athlete you already know those those moments are gonna come back around, so that was really dope to see for him. Yeah, nah, that's dope, man. What you think about y'all y'all chances now that Sam's back? It's funny, I was at the uh, the Real Madrid game against Bayern the other day, and I was talking to somebody, and we were talking about Euro Cup, like. Who who has chances to win? And obviously, y'all came up. Paris came up. 
uh, and obviously Grand Canaria. But uh, yeah, I mean, having Sam back, I think adds another element. How is uh, how has that addition been since? I mean, y'all was rolling, you know, with him out. Um, but how how has it been adding somebody with with that level of usage? Yeah, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment. But you know, Sam is one of them dudes that he cares so much about winning and so much about like being a good teammate that he he's trying to fit in. Um, we're trying to get a, uh, trying to incorporate him back into things. But you know, one of the thing about this team or our team is I don't know if you ever played on a team overseas, but we almost have too much. Like <laughs> at times it's kind of crazy. Like we mm-hmm. have guys who can score 20, 15, 20 on any given night. Like, you know, I'm out there my whole career. I've been in Euro. I think I've averaged maybe like 10 or 11 in Euro cup, my career, but uh, you know, I'm, I'd take four shots a game this year, which is cool. <laughs> four or five shots a game, which is cool. Cause you know, it's going right. to winning and Tariq is another dude who's done the same, but you know, Matt Morgan and Sam, are so good offensively where it's like you almost got to pass to those dudes but we figuring it out with, with sam coming back and and figuring out offensively and defensively but once we get it all all figured out i think it's gonna be scary yo i seen matt was in the rumor mill man they was talking <laughs> about he was supposed to slide to uh what was it milan uh milan and then there was actually something about like partisan too i i'd have to ask him but okay. it was it's, again that's a dope thing about our team we actually addressed it in the in our little film session, like the whole team was in there and it's something about Matt going to Partizan and how coach uh, Petter was trying to recruit him to come to Partizan or something like that. So we had to like address the whole thing. In okay. there. But yeah, it was Milan. I think they wanted, maybe wanted to get him or something like that. And I don't know. I don't know all the details, but yeah, but now I guess they're getting uh, like they're getting Shabazz, but he, he's been doing his thing, man. He get, he keep yeah. getting better and better every game. Yeah, nah, I know for a young dude that probably hurts, man, being locked in that contract when you could could get the upgrade. But at the same time, like, I always think, like, transferring midseason like that, you never know what your role going to be. It could end up being, like, a, a messed up situation. He know? has he has so much freedom with us, and he keeps, like, he's a dude, again, that values that freedom, and he keeps getting better and better. Like, he can score 20 whenever, 32. But, you know, as each game goes on, you can see him, how he controls the game and you know just controls the flow of the game better and better each game so i think i don't know i I be telling him going going to milan is like yeah you want to go get the check but the way he gets to play like it's not going you know it's not going to be like that over in milan so it's like you might as well continue and enjoy this while it's here too because he's going to get paid regardless so it's it'll be all right yeah that's a fact that's a fact but uh Man, transitioning over to Euroleague, man. Were you able to catch some games, man? I went to the, uh, I went to Berlin. I went to Alba, upset in uh, Barcelona, man. And it was, uh, it was funny because Alba was up like ten late, and I knew Barca was gonna make a run. And uh, you know, Barca ended up folding at the end. Vesely missed two free throws, and they had opportunities though. But um, you catch any of the other yearly games? I caught the uh, Pana and Monaco game. I caught the end of that game. Obviously, that was all over social media, too. But, yeah, I definitely caught the end of that game. And that was – I seen Mike James throw the ball up against the uh, – up against the, the uh-huh. bass. The yeah, post. yeah, because <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what they were saying to, to Elliot Kobo in the locker room after the game because that's where I would be hot. <laughs> I would be hot. Yeah. I would be hot. Yeah, nah, he was trying to, he was trying to take a page out of Chima book, man. I mean <laughs> – at that point, like, you don't have to miss it. Like, Chima missed it. Just miss it, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Just shoot it off the back, off the glass to the rim. You know what I mean? I think that's the easiest way to miss a shot and then let them throw a touchdown pass. You lose by a touchdown pass, you just got to live with that, it. That, but also, and then on defense, too. Like, how you can't, how you fall asleep like that. You can't. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, that's that's one mistake, two mistakes. So, in something like that, like, I, I don't know, especially in a in a league like EuroLeague where every game is hotly contested, I don't know, I'd be hot. <laughs> I would be hot. Like, I would have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would be hot. Especially the ones at home. You can't you can't cough them up. Nah, not like that. If you get beat, you get beat, fine. But, yeah, not like that. But I seen something where EuroLeague was, uh, was it last week, had the closest margin, uh, like, a, every game – you seen that? Oh, you seen that stat? Yeah, yeah, every game. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. It was difference. something like within four point, four points or something like Which that. Yeah, is crazy. I'm trying to figure out. You think? Do you think that? Uh, do you think that people in the states would watch the Euroleague if it was on TV and grow preference, even maybe even grow preference um, to the NBA because of the competitiveness of it? 
Well, I, I think I think it would take time. You know what I mean? You know, in the states, it takes time for anything to jump off. It takes like three years, bro. So I think I think the the I was talking to Thomas Walkup about it uh, about a week ago, and it's like it's the perfect time of day to have like yearly basketball comes on at two o'clock in the states. Right after that, you know, the NBA games come on in the evening. Like, there's nothing on TV during the day in the states for those that are, have a TV have access to a TV during the day. So I think it only makes sense. But, you know, I mean, uh, there's just no market for it. So it's going to take, you know, some kind of channel or something like that to uh, to really just take the risk, bite the bullet for a few years. And then as it starts to gain more popularity over here, you know, you you just ride the wave from there. But uh, right now, like downstairs, I got it on ESPN3. I can watch it live, but I got to go through the app. You know, I got to kind of weave my way around, you know, my TV to get to it. But I feel like if it was on... If it was on regular, you know, TV, satellite TV, I think people would tune in. I mean, you're not trying to, during the day, like, you got ESPN Classic or you could watch some bum-ass game from yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That you done seen highlights for 100 times Steve already. So. His opinion I think it makes sense. That nobody gives a damn about his opinion on. Come oh, on, I'll be man. watching that Come shit. On, I'm not going to so. lie. <laughs> <laughs> nah, everybody be tapped in, man. But, uh, man, look, moving forward to today, we got uh, the the rematch, Real Madrid versus Partizan. We all know what happened at the uh, end of last season. It was a fiery uh, playoff series in, uh, between Real Madrid and Partizan and uh, Real Madrid. Uh, that was actually what kind of got Real Madrid fired up and, and off to this uh, this crazy run they on. You know what I'm saying? Only losing the game in EuroLeague so far, man. What are your expectations and what you looking forward to seeing at uh, Real Madrid? You know, I've been looking forward to the big man match because the big man matchup, the sort out, uh, obviously not in partisan, but um, having Frank Kaminsky and, and Caboclo, that's going to be an interesting matchup with Tavares. Specifically, Frank, uh, I've biased. But just his ability to, you would think, to be able to pull Tavares away from the basket should be a huge advantage for for Madrid and open up lanes for punter and all that stuff like that. But you know, then again, I don't know if you're. That's my. That's always been my problem with European basketball. I don't know if they're necessarily thinking like that to specifically exploit a matchup like that. But um, we'll see. Is and the other thing that really stands out, shout out Madrid, because the, the continuity they've had for years, like, I don't know how every EuroLeague team should be striving for that. Like, even if it's a low-budget team, I think that's how you win in, in Europe. Like, if, if your budget's $3 million or $30 million, like, you should try and keep the same guys together as long as you can. Nah, for sure, man. I mean, Real Madrid is just clicking. And I think getting Compazzo back was a, was a key for them because, obviously, he's just he's, – he's grown in that system. But uh, I was thinking the same thing with you in regards to Partizan. I feel like they have the core of bigs right now that can present a lot of problems for uh, Real Madrid. Um, I think with Alexa being out, you know, that's kind of a it's kind of an issue for Partizan. But I think they they have enough stretch bigs. Caboclo could even step out and hit a couple threes, and then you got Smilovich off the bench mm-hmm. who can obviously shoot the ball and put it on the floor. He gave Real Madrid some problems last year, but if I was Jelko Obradovich, I wouldn't show my hand right now <laughs> because you never know if you're gonna see them in the playoffs. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? I might I, I might not I might not show everything I can do with my stretch bigs in this game. I might kind of keep them down low and you know take the L. Um, especially at Real and all that other stuff. And then as you start to get a little closer, um, you know, then you start to to open up the playbook. Shit, no, that, that makes sense. That's uh that makes sense, but at the same time, you two games, what you two games out of eleventh? <laughs> shoot, you might you got you got to get every yeah, you got to yeah. get every you, need you can get. <laughs> but look, but look, winning in in Madrid though, <laughs> that's that's gonna be a tough call. Like that's that's tough for anybody because it's almost like even if you start off well, you know that run is yeah. coming. You know what I mean? Like you know that run is coming. And once they Sergio you uh Sergio Yule's been playing well, man. He's been shooting the ball extremely well. Hazonia's been a monster off the bench for them. I mean, they all clicking yeah. right now, bro. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Like, you know, Yabu Selly's not even been playing. Like, yeah, no, they that's they're playing they're playing good basketball. But to me, like I, I just don't again, you got it to beat Madrid offensively, like you got it. If you spread them out, 
they're going to struggle, especially if you have a stretch big. You have to spread. Oh, defensively, they're going to run their stuff. It's going to be tough to stop them. They're going to score what they average in 85, 87, 90 points a game, something like that. Mm-hmm. So they're going to score. But offensively, I just don't see how they can match up if you if you spread them out, you know what I'm saying, fill corners and, and do things like that. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game, man. Cause I, I I don't know, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. But I'm I think I wouldn't be surprised if they just kind of are looking like down the road. And I think Jelko's the type to make adjustments as as we saw in that Partizan series. And I think that he'll make an adjustment. He's got to save some adjustments for later in case they meet. Yeah. So I, I could see him kind of playing this game kind of chill. And uh, I, I hope it's close because I think what I'm here for in EuroLeague is you. I mean, you got the built in rivalries like Madrid, Barcelona and all the derby games just from. But I think it is cool. Like you you mentioned, uh, EuroLeague become more popular, um, kind of the built in or the, the new age rivalries. I think this could be a cool one for years to come, like Madrid and, and Partizan. Um, you know, you have some have some other ones probably pop up. I'm trying to think, you know, Monaco and Olympiaco seems like one that could kind of sprout up mm-hmm. as well. Um, so I, I think that stuff is cool to see. Yeah, nah, for sure. You know, it was funny. I was talking to uh, my guy, and he was saying, we were talking about how Chus Mateo gets no respect. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think about, if you think, they were talking about firing him if he didn't win a championship. And even if, even after winning the championship, it was still kind of iffy if he was going to get fired or not. Like, I, I mean, people were whispering about it, at least in the media section. But, I mean, Chus has, uh, he did make some adjustments. He made some adjustments, you know, last year towards the end of the playoffs and, uh, you know, going zone and, and things of that nature. And, you know, he's – because he's new, he's a new coach in the game and he doesn't have that les- legendary resume, he's getting zero respect, yet he's got them rolling. That's, that's a that's a tough tough job to walk into because it's kind of like we don't need you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we've done, that, we've done this before. Like, it's not true. It's us. But he should no. He definitely he definitely deserves deserves credit because you know I think he deserves some. I, I think he deserves something. a lot because when you walk into that scenario, I think that might be as a player. I'm, we're kind of like all right, yo, like just don't come in and and fuck this up. Like we had on a much smaller scale. My rookie year, we went to the finals in Italy, and uh, they ended up firing our head coach and bringing in a new guy who was the assistant of the national team in Italy. And the next year, we just weren't as good because he came in and try to do his own thing, put it in his own. So I think coaches do deserve credit. Less is more. And he seems to be one of those type of guys where it's like, you know what? I understand the situation. Y'all do your thing. I'm going to put, you know, make these little wrinkles adjustments, but like y'all know what y'all doing. I'm just going to not mess it up. That's good coaching to me. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, that's a fact, man. I think, uh, choose, choose deserves some, some, some kind of flowers, man. He got him this far. So, but we'll see, uh, We'll see. It, you know, it get real. It get real once the once the springtime rolls around, man. So yeah. that's when we really gonna see what he about, man. Once it gets into another, uh, once it gets into another playoff, yeah, just that second that second time around, that second run through the uh, through the uh, gauntlet is when it really starts to to ratchet up in any European competition. No, nah, that's a fact, man. And uh, and lastly, man, uh, we 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 got some news shaking through the uh, rumor mill. Uh, Shabazz Napier is moving down to back to Milan, uh, where he had a he had a great showing last year. He averaged fifteen points, uh, shot forty five percent from three, and had about three point nine assists. Uh, this year hasn't been so great for him over at Red Star. He's only averaging nine points. He's shooting about thirty percent from three. Uh, what do you think about the move back to Milan and uh, what do you think sparked it? Well, first of all, I think that Milan been looking for a guard, right? But the Shabbat, Shabbat, I hope we can get him on the podcast because does he owe somebody an apology? Wasn't he all, didn't, didn't Messina say this was going to happen? <laughs> didn't, I feel like, didn't he say that Shabazz went, went viral on him and said that wasn't true? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was texting, he texting, he texting his teammates. He want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> he want that old man. thing back. <laughs> man, so, <laughs> I mean, no, I think I think it's a good move. Milan needs guards. I think it's tough. Uh, you know, they got Siobhan Shields in and Miritich carrying the scoring load. So I think they, uh, 
Milan, since Malcolm retired, to me, has been missing someone like Shabazz. So I think that that's a big pickup mm-hmm. for them. And I think that uh, hopefully, you know, they're however many games, how many games out of first are they? Let me double check. I think they're, what, maybe, or not first, they're maybe four games out of the playoffs or three games out of the playoffs, something like that. Um, so I think that's something that could really, Shabazz having the ball more in Red Star, I feel like they was kind of using him like he was a Spanish guard, like kind of had, had him kind of on a leash a little bit, like <laughs> had him on a yeah, leash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So him going back there, I think it's going to be big for uh, for him and Milan. Yeah, I think I think there's just switching switching teams in the middle of the year is never easy for a player, but obviously you have a little more comfort going back to a gym you've played in before, you've had success, uh, same coach. You know, there's a lot of similarities there for him. And then, too, I mean, think about all the change that he's had in Red Star. You know what I mean? They fired their coach, brought somebody else in. Um, he's dealing with injuries. I mean, there was just a lot going on there. And, and I always said in the beginning of the season, I was like, I feel like Shabazz is like, holding back. I don't know if it was him or if it was the coach, but it's yeah. like first half he wouldn't do anything and then second half he come out have 16, 20 points and I'm like, yo, he's, his foot's not on the gas 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And I don't know if that was coming from the bench or that was coming, you know, from from his own mind, but um yeah, I think hopefully, you know, this will this will change things around for Milan cuz I mean, they got they got enough pieces on that team to be a playoff mm-hmm. team if when everybody's yeah. healthy, you know what I'm saying? And they've definitely underachieved. And, you know, management over there in Milan has let everybody know they ain't getting rid of Messina, so <laughs> something got to change. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's their guy, clearly. But, hey, two games – two I forget, they, two games out of the play-in, too. So, I think – I mean, I think that makes them a play. Like you said, I, I do think that makes them a playoff team. I think they'll figure – Shab- and, honestly, I think it's easier – I don't think it's easier. I think that there's a in his particular situation, changing teams is not so hard in the middle of the season. Because I feel like it's like you said, it's almost mm-hmm. like a refreshment. It's almost like all right, he's gonna go over here. Maybe it'll be like a release. Like all right, I can I can do my thing. Is you know what I'm saying? Some of that pressure, it's whatever you want to call it, pressure or just that weight comes off your shoulder. You just go hoop. Um, Especially right. in Milan, don't got no other choice either. So it's not he's gonna be able to be. He should be able to play free. They don't really got much other than right. You know, they got the the Italian guard. I'm blanking on his name. Uh, um, oh, uh, you talking about a uh, Tony? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, they got Mato Low, Mato Low, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking Mato Low, Flacadori, and Tony, but Flacadori, Flacadori so yeah, 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 they're a little yeah. thin at the at the point guard, like the ball handler, playmaker spot, but. Um, yeah, it should be it should be interesting. And real quick, what do you think about Pangos? Man, in terms of him just being it, which which part? The change. The cha- I mean, the change is obviously needed. You know what? I think they need to start doing trade. I know they have that that window where you can exchange or trade players in Euroleague. I think that needs to be a, a mm-hmm. year round, or at least some similar to the NBA, where it's a trade deadline, but. Honestly, right. shout out to Pangos for staying out there. And I know I heard he had an option to to go home and decided not to. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, shout out, shout out to him for sticking through it. And same thing for him. Just be somewhere where he goes, he goes somewhere and he gets to play and kind of get back on the court and some of that weight will be will be dropped off his shoulders. You all know what he could do when he's when he's healthy and doing his thing. So yeah, and I think he'll probably be in a better situation when he doesn't have to, like, carry the load yeah, at the point yeah, guard yeah. position. You know, kind of, you know, he's got Yago, he's got Milo. She can play off the ball yeah. some. Um, you know, I, I think he'll, it might be a, a better situation for him, especially if he wasn't getting along with Messina mm-hmm. anyway. You know what I mean? It's a fresh start. It's sometimes that's that's all you need. But, you know what I mean? I've been hearing, uh, you know, I've been hearing they're, they're bringing somebody else over there too. Mm, it makes sense. Can't can't say that through the waiver wire, but you know. <laughs> nah, nah. it's supposed to be a nah. scoop show, man. What you doing? It's supposed to be a scoop show. You better drop the juice. Nah, nah man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta let the people know, man. This is a snitch show. <laughs> yeah, man. I, hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to stay employed, my brother. Uh, tell, so, me, I, tell me, I'll tell me, y'all find a scoop. <laughs> y'all find a scoop somewhere else. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let the fans, I'm gonna let the fans go figure it out. But uh, I heard. Red Star is making another move and about to add another addition within the next week. So, um, 
Yeah. Slide, slide me Stay the piece tuned. of paper. I'll drop it. Don't worry. Anonymously. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no doubt, man. But uh, that's all we got for Inside Overseas. We're going to uh, keep keep the content coming. Please like, subscribe, and uh, go go check out the Role Player uh, podcast if you haven't already. And go follow Role Player Media on Twitter and Instagram. You got our Instagram handles below. Appreciate y'all listening. We'll catch y'all next time.